Hello, I am Bentham, and this is Niche, a genetic survival game. Quite an interesting subtitle, but a very descriptive one. I learned about this game uh, quite a while back, actually, uh, in the same way I learned about many games, because Avec played it, and at the time it was in early access, and it has just been fully released. We're in version 1.0.1, and um, you can get this right now on Steam, as you've been able to for a while, but I thought that now that it is complete, uh, it's a good time to actually take a look at it myself. So. Let us start uh, a game. Made a couple of test things just to see how the thing worked, but of course we'll just uh, set up a new one. Two modes you can do, story mode or sandbox mode. And um, honestly, it seems like the story mode is supposed to be like a, uh, a tutorial thing, really. I'm not really sure. I've tried both and they both uh, seem to be fairly similar. Experience the story of Adam recommended for new players. If, well, I'm not a new player now. I have played it a bit, so I think we'll try sandbox and then we can try a couple of different... Uh, kinds of thing here. We'll start with easy just because, you know, I mean, I have played, but I've not played a lot, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it one step at a time. We've got Tiny Green, Peaceful Meadow, Grass Adventure, or Archipelago. I like the sound of a peaceful meadow, that's lovely. So let us uh, begin. We'll take a moment to load, but yes, this is a genetic survival game, which is quite interesting. Sort of thing that I've been uh, looking for, really. Of uh, It's all about uh, having a tribe of, of creatures, animals, sort of dog cat things it's generic mammals and um, as well as making sure that they survive and that their whole tribe survives you have to manage their evolution you have to well not exactly evolution but you have to keep an eye on their genetics and try and uh, work with that to create the the most suitable animals for their environment and the environment changes so you have to change the animals uh, and uh, sometimes bad genetics get um, brought into the system and stuff like that there's a lot of cool stuff like that going on. But here we are, we have uh, loaded into our world. Uh, quite a large island we've got over here. However, we've ended up on our own little one down here, which is perhaps not the best. Hopefully we can swim. But here are our two creatures. You can see them there hiding in the grass. Let's take a look at what we have. So we have uh, Rook here, and we have Lair, Lare. I'm not really sure. There's a sort of system to, to how these names usually work. You can see there's a whole bunch of, uh, of stuff here, and what this is talking about is the sort of characteristics of this particular creature, and what we can do is uh, look at its DNA. So let's try this one here. So this shows the uh, the DNA strand, essentially. Let's actually go into this view. This shows the, uh, the family tree. At the moment, it's fairly bare, as you'd expect. There's one, and there's the other, and nothing else has happened yet. But here's the DNA strand, and it also shows all the characteristics of this particular creature. So here's Rogue here saying hi to us. And um, it works sort of like real genetics. Of course, it's never going to be as complicated as the real thing because that would be ridiculous and probably wouldn't make that fun a game. It's on a sort of level where it's easy to understand and it's good for sort of learning how this system works. So we'll go down the list and we'll see what sort of uh, different genes these creatures can have. So we've got um, immunity. In fact, what I should do is explain to you exactly how this works in case you don't know. So. When two uh, creatures breed, their genetic, uh, their DNA uh, essentially merges. Basically, half the DNA from one creature and half the DNA from the other come together to form the DNA of the new creature. And so the creature ends up with two like sets of everything. Um, everything's in pairs, and so you have interesting sort of dynamics between the the different what they're called as alleles. And so each one of these is an allele, and they form pairs like chromosomes, but not quite because in chromosomes there's billions of alleles, whereas in this case we've got, I think it's like 23 or something like that. Simplified, of course. So, um, the interactions are different. Sometimes they work together with each other. Sometimes one um, beats the other, essentially, and, and that is what is expressed, and the other thing is just carried and doesn't have an effect on the creature. And uh, there's different ones to sort of simulate different kinds of things. So, first of all, we have the immunity thing. So, in these ones, the alleles work together. So, you have two different immunities. You want a creature to have two different immunities because that means that they are less likely to become ill with anything in particular. If they had matching ones, that would be bad because they'd only be immune to uh, thing C uh, rather than thing C and thing D. It's a little bit weird. Uh, fertility, this one works together, so there's two high fertility alleles, which means that he's very high fertility. Then this one's an interesting one. This is different depending on whether you're a male or a female. This is blood clotting, so at the moment Rakir here has normal blood clotting, and that means that he will not bleed to death the moment he is scratched. 
Um, but he only has one of these, and the other one is blank. He does not have a gene, and that is because this is carried in the Y chromosome. The Y chromosome, I know it's carried in the X chromosome, actually. And that is a, a weird thing in genetics, in that normally the chromosomes match up, and for, or, like for every chromosome, there's an allele in each one from uh, like the male or the female. But what determines gender is the X and the Y chromosomes, and they are different because one's an X and one's a Y, and the Y is missing a bit. And some of the, uh, there are some genes that are on the bit that's missing, that uh, thus don't come about in the Y chromosome in the male. So, the blood clotting gene is an allosome gene, and that means that it only appears on the branch of the X, and so if you have an X and a Y because you are male, then you don't have the second one. So, it entirely is based on that one that you have, whereas a female, if you can hop over to here, has two of them, and in this case, they are both normal blood clotting ones, but they could be carrying a, a bad one, and then that could be the one that's passed down to a male, and then he's in all sorts of trouble because that's the only one he has. So there's all, all sorts of weird dynamics with that, and in fact, that is related to colour blindness. Um, parts of, uh, of our ability to uh, see certain colours are on that branch of the X chromosome, which is why uh, colour blindness of various forms is more common in males than females. It's a, a, a weird fact. So there's a couple of other things here. All this stuff here is mostly about like patterning and stuff and how the creature looks. So this one is brown uh, with some nice sort of fur on the head here. Most of the stuff is actually not here. There's a lot of uh, like patterns and stuff that this creature just simply doesn't have but might be introduced later. So at the moment there's nothing going on with these particular sections. It is carrying the no pattern gene, which I think is why these are like this. Um, and then it also has a on the other side an inactive mask gene. So perhaps you can just have mask gene here. Some of these can be quite complicated. Um, it's carrying beige fur. Um, oh, actually, it has beige fur, but it is carrying white. I think they mix, though, to make a sort of amalgamation. Um, it is. It has white horns and red horns, but it is not expressing them because down here there's also a separate set of genes for horns, so it has no horns, but it is carrying ram horns. They've not been expressed because no horns has priority over ram horns, but uh, if that was somehow removed and we just had someone with two ram horn genes, then it would be a chance for the ram horns to express themselves and then they would have one of these colours. Also has black eyes, is carrying blue eyes, um, has moss brown fur and black fur and I think yeah that does mix so it's a sort of dark brown. Um, it doesn't have melanism, it doesn't have albinism and it isn't carrying those at all either which is always nice and uh, it has a medium tail also carrying the same that gives it some cold resistance. Uh, hind legs are the same for both, gives some speed and a little bit of swimming ability, which is good so he can get off this island without them drowning. Uh, he has a digging paw, and he also has a claw, so this is a weird one where uh, instead of one having priority over the other, one hand is one and the other is the other. So it has a digging paw here and a claw here, so they will both be useful. This one for killing things and fishing, and the other one for digging, of course medium body and that gives all sorts of different bonuses basically there's small medium and large and maybe a couple of others as well and they define a lot of stuff about the creature so this one um, it basically establishes particularly how generally fast or uh, strong this one is and that's all, all it has uh, has a short snout and but is carrying a big nose which gives a, a better uh, smelling bonus than a short snout is so if we can breed out the short snout and uh, keep the big nose thing active then we might be able to get some creatures that are better at smelling uh, and it also has eyes which is always nice but it is carrying blind eyes and we do not want that being expressed in its young because that would be terrible and as we've seen before it has the stuff with the horns it also has medium ears and uh, those are both of the alleles we can hop over to the other one I uh, will not go through these in quite so much detail we've gone through the, the sort of basics of it now but this one has two different immunities thankfully they are different than the ones that Rakir has, which means that uh, whatever children they have, they will have two different immunities, which is a good start. Good fertility, blood clotting's fine, pattern stuff is pretty similar, more of a sort of uh, orangey uh, colour to the fur. Carrying violet eyes, well, that's quite cool. Uh, normal fur stuff, everything's fine with melanism and albinism, tail's the same, hind legs the same. This one has two velvet paws, which are very good for stealth and for collecting, so this might be good for uh, hunting rabbits and um, collecting berries, that sort of thing. This one also has medium body. And again, we have short snout but carrying big nose. So there is a 25% chance that the young of uh, Larian Rakir will have uh, two big nose genes and thus express the big nose, which is always nice. Um, has eyes, 
but is carrying short-sighted eyes, and that is very bad because that means that uh, one of the young could easily pick up short-sighted eyes and blind eyes and be in a very bad starting position. Same stuff with the horns, same stuff with the ears. So that's the, the basic idea of it. And how we're going to start this is we're going to breed these two together, but we might want to do a little bit of exploring, grabbing food first, perhaps. I think the main thing is to get off this island. This is not a particularly good place to be. We want to be on the mainland, so we've got more access to, uh, to trees and more places to explore. And if we end up with any young that can't swim, they're not trapped on this particular island forever. So let's try and leave. So we've grabbed uh, Rook here, here. And we will hop over to the edge here. We can hop off onto this little island here. And uh, yeah, the way that uh, it works is the you have uh, a turn every day. And within those turns, each animal has uh, three actions, or it usually does. You've got these three little gems on the front here, which uh, show how many actions the creature has. So we've used two so far, we've got one more, but I'm not sure about putting the creature into the water. I'm not fully versed yet on exactly how water works, and I'm scared about ending a turn on a corner because I think that basic, not on a corner, ending a turn in water because that might mean that uh, he spends the entire night underwater and then drowns. So we'll not do that. What we'll do is we'll leave him there for the moment, he'll not use his full turns. We will move uh, Larry to here. Let's, uh, can we turn around? There we go. I reckon we can make the jump here. So I'm going to try swimming down to here and swimming up to here. Yep, we made it. Uh, but unfortunately, I think we're going to have to leave Rook here for now because I'm not sure about leaving him in the water. It might not go well for him. So he can stay there for now, but that's fine. Actually, some fish have just swum right next to him. So what we can do, perhaps is catch some fish and yes we managed to get two food so we've got a couple of different resources down here well actually that one is how many creatures we have which is two as we know 22 food is how much we have uh, what happens is whenever a night passes each creature will eat one food i think that's actually changed from before i think it used to be that uh, every action used a food but now it's been made uh, slightly easier i suppose and then we also have a uh, nest material which is what we use to build nests and we need nests to breed, so once we've got both our creatures onto the mainland, we'll probably build a nest. Though you can find them in amongst the grass to save on the materials, it does take a while to build up a supply of uh, 10 nest material. But anyway, that we've done all that we can for this particular turn, so we will end this particular day. So night will pass, a couple of things will happen. There are other creatures around the place that might be moving around. Whatever this is has turned up, is that a crab? It looks to be. Uh, I think we'll leave that. What we want to do is get Rook here onto the mainland. So we'll just hop him into the water here. Then we can hop him straight up onto this grass over here. He can start exploring and seeing what he finds. What have we found here? There is a nut that we could attempt to crack. However, we do not have much nut cracking ability. We don't have any, uh, like, our claws and our jaw aren't built for that sort of thing. So uh, it might not work. What we can do is clear some grass, start making a bit of space so we can make a, a bit of room for ourselves where we can safely see and not get uh, jumped on by a... Uh, various creatures that want to murder us because of course this is an ecosystem there are there are carnivores out there and uh, we are carnivores as well well we're omnivores i think uh, particularly also there is this cool thing where the, the creatures follow your mouse around and look at whatever you're doing however i've noticed if we just go around the top here uh, oh oh no oh that's not that's not nice i'm gonna assume they've got some owl genes in them and that i've not just broken a neck that was slightly horrifying but what we'll do is we'll hop up to here we try and shake this tree to get more nuts down, but neither of these creatures are good at harvesting nuts, so we should uh, try and find our food elsewhere. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mate with Rakir, and then I'm going to use this space that we've uh, made to build a nest. And now uh, Larry will wait here in the nest, and uh, after the night is over, well, let's just uh, take the clock. A child has been born, so let's take a look at them. A couple more nuts falling from the tree. All sorts of things happen as the, the time passes. We have Coriana. And uh, let's take a look at what genes we've inherited here. How well has it gone? We've got uh, two different immunities. High fertility, of course. That's all already as you'd expect. Uh, two normal blood clotting genes because they are female. And so they've inherited the, the one from Rakir. If they were male, then they would inherit this. And they would end up with uh, only the one gene, of course. All this normal stuff. That's the thing. These two creatures are very similar, and so the resulting offspring are going to be fairly similar. We've ended up with a velvet paw, so we've got a bit of stealth and collecting, and also a digging paw. That's probably a nice mix. Gives us a few different options for how we can uh, gather food. Medium body, of course. 
We've ended it with a short snout, unfortunately, but we do still have a big nose, so there's still a chance that maybe Coriana's children uh, might end up getting uh, a big nose themselves. Ooh, but we've ended up with short-sighted eyes and blind eyes, so we have sight, but it is quite terrible, and we're carrying this, so our offspring could end up uh, in a bad way. The danger here is that if Rokir and Larry have another child, and that child again is carrying short-sightedness and blind eyes, and is male, and then we want to breed the next generation, and so Coriana and this other um, sibling, I suppose, uh, were to breed, you might end up with a creature that entirely has blind eyes. That would be very unfortunate and uh, quite a problem for it. And so you've got to watch out for those sort of things, and you've got to try and... You've got to keep an eye on your genetics and make sure that you're keeping the good uh, features in and trying to keep the, the bad features out. It also has no horns, unfortunately. Once again, it picked up one of the, the ram genes at least, so there's still a chance. And it has medium ears, of course. So a, a fairly good one. Bit. The only problem really is the, the short-sightedness. Everything else has gone well. So uh, they can soon start getting on with things, but at the moment they, they don't have any turns. They're just focusing on being alive. That is what they spend their time doing. So our creature should get out and uh, get on with things. Perhaps he should do some hunting. Unfortunately, it's a little bit awkward because Rakir is good at attacking things, but uh, Larry is good at stalking. So uh, we've got to sort of work out how we're going to do that. I guess it'll be Larry's job to do the hunting, and then uh, Rakir can be more about defending the, the tribe from potential attackers. Anyway, uh, there's another button down here, which is quite cool. So currently we are seeing what the creatures can see. Uh, each one has their own sight range, and that determines the total area that we can see. But we can switch it to smell, and uh, their smell is significantly better than their sight. So we can see that there's some sort of mole creature over here. There's a couple of uh, sticks around. I think those might be roots, so you can you can dig those up and uh, get some food from those. There's also a berry bush over here that we can harvest for food. And uh, there's a clam in the water here that I don't think we could quite see before. And then we also have the hearing vision, I suppose. And so, of course, we can't hear the roots, but we can hear the mole thing. And we can't hear the clam. So each of the, the three different uh, senses can be used for different things. Uh, some things can't be heard, some things can't be smelled, some things can't be seen. So it's a good idea to switch between these fairly often and keep an eye on things. And it's good to have creatures that have, like, all three of those senses be good. Um, and, of course, you can try diversifying so there's some that are really good at hearing and some that are... Uh, really good at sight and that sort of thing, and that will overall help you to, like, it'll help the tribe to function better. So at the same time, you want to breed in certain good things, but you also want a bit of diversity so that you have uh, lots of different strengths. But anyway, let us continue on. So let's take a turn, I think, to clear out some space so we've got a a bit of room to, to breathe. So what we can do with, uh, with Larry is uh, spend some time clearing out the... Uh, the grass is around here, and Rakir can wander up to here, see if he can find this berry bush we've uh, we've smelled. And here it is, we can uh, harvest it. Unfortunately, uh, Rakir isn't very good at harvesting, but he can try. We'll get one fruit from each attempt. Uh, unfortunately, he's used up all his turns already there, and so that is the end for this particular day. We will tick it over once more, and everyone gets their uh, points back. And of course, three food has been eaten. And uh, now we can start to control Coriana. Can't do much yet, of course, still quite young. There's a, a life track here that shows uh, like different stages. So uh, it's past the first stage into the second, where you have one action. In the third, you have two. And in the fourth, you are an adult, and you have the standard three. There's an interesting thing about how uh, health works as well. This is also your health bar. When you take damage, you lose lifespan. And so the older you are, the more likely it is that uh, you could be killed immediately by uh, being attacked. Um, but also, it can have a permanent negative effect. If you get into a fight, it means that you know that this creature will never live quite as long as it otherwise could have. Um, the, uh, the damage is often permanent. So we do need to watch ourselves. But anyway, Coriana can wander off this way a little bit. Can't do much yet, but uh, soon she'll grow and be able to uh, help us gather food and so on. And what we should do is uh, grow our numbers a little bit more. We want to make sure that our, our family can survive and uh, the more we have, the more likely it is that even if we're attacked by some angry predators, we'll be able to, to rebuild our tribe. So once again, we will have, well, we'll, we'll control, we'll use Larry to do the breeding and then uh, Rakir can focus more on gathering. So you can mate uh, and then you've still got two actions left. You could wander off and come back, but that would be pointless. You might as well use the remaining actions you have to clear some grass around here. And then you can be uh, ready in the nest 
uh, for the next child. If there's not a nest around, then you just will stay pregnant until you can find one. So you've got to, you've got to build one of those to be able to uh, grow your family. Right, so uh, Rakir, not very good at harvesting, so perhaps we'll uh, instead... Well, let's have a look at what we can see around here. Oh, hello. There's something nearby. Can we take a look at this? Not really. We need sight to get more information about it. But there is some sort of scary looking creature around there, but perhaps we can bring it round to our side. Uh, yeah, we can't hear it, so it's quite the, the quiet one. Perhaps it's very good at stealth or something. I think we should go over and, and try and uh, greet it. So, Rakir can go over there. And there's the creature It's wandering around as we are. Looking, uh, you know, it's um, not the most attractive of faces, but uh, this is Rana. Let And we have access to look at all its um, genetic information here. So, got good immunities. Fertility is a little bit lower, but it's still fine. Uh, normal blood clotting, but she is carrying hemophilia, which means that you'll take high damage from blood loss, which isn't great. But uh, still might be useful to add them to our numbers for other reasons, just to help us gather food and so on. This is all normal, though she is carrying albinism, so that could be a little bit dangerous. Has a medium tail, giving cold resistance, but is carrying a swimming tail. That is something that it would be that would be nice to introduce to uh, to our pack. Uh, normal hind legs, that's all the same. I'm not sure if anything changes with all... Yeah, I think it does. I think you can get, like, webbed feet and stuff like that for being uh, better at swimming. Nimble fingers, good for collecting and for cracking. So, uh, Rana can be useful for gathering nuts. That would help uh, give us another supply of food from our uh, the tree that we've set up shop by, which is nice. Also has a velvet paw, so good for stealth and collecting. Has a spiky body, which is uh, good for defense, I believe. Uh, also makes you scentless, which will help with... Uh, with stealth related things. Um, has a short snout, but uh, what is being expressed is the derp snout, which actually is functionally entirely the same as a short snout. It seems to have no different effects. So, uh, you know, any negative thoughts we have about the look of this snout, it's entirely our own prejudices. Uh, excuse me, it's hard to pronounce. Our own prejudices. And uh, Rana can smell just as well as anybody else. However, has short-sighted eyes and is carrying blind eyes. That is not good for us at all. We're, we've already got far too much of that in our uh, our system. We do not want any more. Has no horns but is carrying antlers. Uh, has medium ears but is carrying big ears which add heat resistance, reduce cold resistance, but give us fantastic hearing. So overall I think we do want to try introducing some of this material into our our pack. I think it would help us overall. Unfortunately there's a couple of negative things in there so uh, we may regret it but there's definitely some things in there that it would be very nice to have. So uh, what I can do with uh, Rokir is I can offer five food to join the tribe. So we'll do that. It's a lot of our supplies, but it's someone to help us gather more supplies. So uh, hopefully we can uh, make up the number fairly soon. We are down to ten food, but uh, that's enough for us to survive for two more days, even if we harvest nothing. So we should be fine. Uh, now, another thing Rokir can do is we can try some uh, digging. There's apparently a root here. I believe we smelled that before. There we go, one food, not a huge amount, but it's helpful. Uh, and yes, we have a uh, Rana that we can make use of. We can hop over to here. Unfortunately, there's no nuts around here, but actually, yeah, we can uh, reach these nuts down here. We can crack it open, and uh, that has got us two more food, so starting to contribute straight away. And so there we go. Uh, we've uh, started to grow our family, and we've managed to, uh, to bring uh, some extra genetic material into the herd, which is important. If you just keep breeding these two and their offspring forever, you're going to end up losing like various genes down the line, and by the end of it, your like your, your tribe is not going to be in a good state at all. It's going to end up with all sorts of, uh, of negative traits that can potentially be amplified, which would not be good for us at all. So bringing in new material is very important, but uh, we are about at the end for today. Next episode, we will continue to grow. We've got a, a child on the way, and uh, we want to try uh, bringing, like, trying breeding with Rana to see if we can get some uh, some offspring that have the best of both worlds, hopefully. Um, could backfire, though, that is the danger. And, um, yeah, I, I love the idea of this. I love the idea of, of like, working with this genetic stuff and um, being able to see what all the genes are and then being able to try and, and mix them together in the right way to, to make a stronger tribe and to try and diversify and fit certain environments and things like that and you can like migrate to other locations and then have other difficulties to deal with. Uh, it's, it's really cool, so I think I'm going to carry on with this for a while and see what sort of uh, fun things I can do with it, but that is all we have time for today, so I shall say goodbye, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.